Hey everyone, get ready for an exciting lecture where we dive into the fascinating world of time shifting of discrete time signals. Now, what exactly is the time shifting? Well, it's the process of shifting a signal denoted as x of n in time by replacing the independent variable n with n minus m where m is an integer okay so a signal x of n may be shifted in time by replacing independent variable n by n minus m where m is what integer in simpler term we can say that x of n minus m is a shifted version of x of n clear but what happens when we shift a signal in time it can result in either a time delay or time advance. Let's break it down. Fine. So if M happens to be a positive integer, then the time shift will cause a delay of M units of time. This means that each sample of X of N will be shifted to the right. Imagine it like pressing the fast forward button on a video, but for time. Clear? So if M is what a positive integer, the time shift results in a delay by M unit of time. Shift is to the right. We'll check it by the help of example. Don't worry. On the other hand, if M is a negative integer, right? the time shift will result in an advance of the signal by mod m units in time. This means that each sample of x of n will be shifted to the left. It's like rewinding time but in a mathematical sense. Clear? So if m is what a negative integer it is advance and the shift is to the left. To really grasp the concept of time delay and time advance, let's take a look at some examples. These examples will help us understand how shifting in signal in time can affect its behavior. Okay, so let's see one by one. So suppose I have a signal x of n is equal to 3 for n is equal to 2. 2 for n is equal to 3, 1 for n is equal to 4, and 0 for other n. So I want to perform the time shift operations. Clear? So what I will do here is, first let x1 of n is equal to x of n minus 2, right? We have to replace this n by what? n minus m, right? That is the time shift, right? Replace the n by n minus m. So, if you compare this expression with this, so what you got to know here, here, m is equal to what 2, m is equal to what 2, 2 means which is what, which is a positive integer, which is a positive integer, clear? So, if m is positive here, so what does it mean? So, x1 of n is what? Is a delayed, is a delayed, right? Signal of x of n. That means delay x of n by 2 units by 2 units hope this is clear to you because m is equal to 2 so you have to delay x of n by 2 units now let's see the graphical representation of this fine so let's see this one by one okay so this is our original signal we have already seen the functional representation so at n is equal to 2, what was the value of x of n 3? At n is equal to 3, the value was 2. At n is equal to 4, the value was 1. So this is what our normal signal, which is basically the original signal, you can say, right? Now, what we did, x of x1 of n is equal to 
x of n minus 2. So, what I said to you, you have to shift by 2 units, but which side? We have already learned that if m is positive integer, then the time shift results in a delay by m units of time, shift is to the right. So, now, now whatever value you are getting at 2, you have to shift by 2 units. So, the same value you will get at n is equal to 4. Whatever value you are getting at n is equal to 3, so shift it 2 units right. So, you will get at 5, right. Same you have to do for 4. So, n is equal to 4. Now, shift it to 2 units right. So, 4, 5, 6. So, at n is equal to 6, you will get what? 1. At n is equal to 5, you will get what? 2. At n is equal to 4, you will get what? 3. So, basically what happened here? The signal was started from n is equal to 2, right? Now, it is giving the same value at n is equal to 4 and so on. So, what happened here is shifting, shifting x of n to the right, to the right, okay, by 2 units, simple. Hope this is clear to you. So, here this x1 of n is what? This particular signal is what? Delayed, delayed version of, delayed version of x of n. Hope it is clear to you why we are calling it as delayed version. I was expecting something at n is equal to 2, but now I am getting at n is equal to 4, the same value. So, it is delay, right? Simple. Now, let us see the another example. Now, let x2 of n is equal to x of n plus 2, okay? So, here if you see, so m is equal to what? Minus 2, which is what? Which is a negative integer, which is a negative negative integer. Clear? Now, if m is equal to minus 2, it means what? It is advanced case, right? And shift is to the left. So, basically, x2 of n, x2 of n is an advanced signal of x of n right that is what that is advancing x of n by 2 units by 2 units clear so if i am writing like this x of n or this it means the same okay don't get confused both are small only if i have to write capital i will write like this clear fine now let's see the graph for x2 of n which is equal to what x of n plus 2 as i told you it is what basically an advanced signal so you have to shift x of n to the left by two units so what you have to perform simply shifting x of n to the left to the left okay by two units So, whatever value you are getting at n is equal to 2, now you will get the same value at n is equal to 0, right? Am I, am I right? Because you have to shift 2 unit to the left. So, whatever value you are getting at n is equal to 2, you will get the same value at n is equal to 0 now, that is equal to 3. Whatever value you are getting at n is equal to 3, you will get at n is equal to 1 now whatever value you are getting at n is equal to 4 in the original signal, you will get now at n is equal to 2, that is what? 1. So, what you did is basically, you shifted x of n to the left by 2 units. Simple. This is what? This is called advanced version. Advanced version of x of n. Why advanced version? Because you are expecting some value at n is equal to 2, but the same value you are getting at n is equal to 0 now. So, it is what? Advanced, right? 
you are getting the value in advance clear so as per the conclusion what you can see here is x1 of n and x2 of n is shifted version shifted version of x of n simple hope this much is clear to you so that's the scoop on time shifting of discrete time signals in our next lecture we will be exploring the interviewing topic of folding of discrete time signals if you have any questions or concerns feel free to drop them in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel for more exciting contents thanks for tuning in and happy learning